when they started saying we was going to have a flood, I thought, well, big deal. I've had five or six floods and never had water in the house. Well, this was a super one. <laughs> This is the high desert it is for high crying desert. out loud. You don't have floods like that in a desert. What happened on September 12th in Colorado was an epic flood. You know, some people call it a thousand year flood or a freak flood, but let's attribute it to climate change and uh, the trillions of acre feet of water blew right through the highest active density of oil and gas well pads in the United States. How do you guys feel about climate change? Is it, is it something that you think about in terms of? I, I've been on the earth for 60 years and I've seen the climate change back and forth and back and forth. I believe it's cyclical and I don't believe that humans can affect anything. Weld County itself has over 21,000 active oil and gas wells. There are hundreds of wells that I've looked at that were damaged by the flood. One in particular really stands out, which is uh, along the South Platte River, uh, a nice lady named Catherine. It's so nice. We've had the best bunch of young people out here, six or eight at a time, and yeah. just from all over the place. I mean, they've done everything. They got my house tore out down to the rafters. The oil and gas industry has several exemptions. The Clean Water Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act, and the Clean Air Act. The industry does not have to abide by key provisions that would protect you and the environment. Looking at Kathy's property, she has actually two wells positioned in the floodplain, and then the water went past the floodplain about 800 feet on each side. This is the wellhead to this well pad. Um, you can see the red fence around it. This fence has been bent because of the massive debris that's come through and pushed it. You can see this pipe is actually bent probably 10 degrees that way towards the water. Um, so if this thing would have snapped off, they would have had an immediate problem with this wellhead itself. The other parts we have to look at, this is a produced water vault. That's the concrete vault over there. Here's the lid and you can see the piping snapped and broke off like right here. So that's produced water. It's somebody's boat trailer. Their hitch is right there, and this is their tire and the fender well. That's the tire. So somebody's boat trailer is underneath the ground. Here's the produced water vault right here. Remember the lid is over there? water that they find about 7,500 feet below the ground so it comes back up has natural chemicals can have naturally occurring radioactive material in it but it also has a mixture of the fracking fluids in it as well so this produced water is usually picked up by a truck and hauled off to a class 2 industrial waste injection pit so we're the wind is blowing this way so we're let's go up wind The oil well company's been out here really working, so I don't think there was that much contamination from oil wells. Why should we be concerned about oil and gas well pads that are in people's yards when they're not concerned? It's a really great question. I think it's, it really has to do with awareness. We, we know what comes out of there. It's just not oil and gas. And I'm finding that the vast majority of the people that have well pads close to their homes they have no idea what's coming out because 
those hydrocarbon vapors are invisible to the to the eye. You can only see them using infrared technology. So those are carcinogenic and endocrine disrupting chemicals that actually mutate our DNA and our reproductive organs and our systems. So they're very harmful to us. I really believe that the oil and gas industry is doing a disservice to the public by not telling them the various ways their operations are very harmful. It's a heavy industry and it should never ever be placed near homes where people live. I think carbon dioxide is just food for trees, so that doesn't worry me a bit. That's ridiculous. And I've seen enough arguments about the false science of carbon dioxide. I don't buy that. Thank you.